Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's lesson is going to come from Luke chapter 8, the parable of the sower. Jesus taught in parables in the New Testament often. What exactly is a parable? A parable is a lesson taught through stories. Often the lessons that Jesus taught were telling us how he wanted to live our how he wanted us to live our lives. Let's see what he has to say here to us. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told them this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he scattered the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Hmm. So we have this story of a farmer planting seeds. What does that have to do with me and my life and how God wants me to live? Well, the disciples asked the same thing. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that though seeing, they may not see though hearing they may not understand. Wait, this is maybe getting more confusing than what it was. Though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. In verse 4, it said that Jesus shared this parable with a large crowd. They all saw and they all heard, but they didn't all understand. By speaking in parables, only those that were open to hearing God's word and knowing what he was meaning for people in their lives understood it. Otherwise, people just heard a story of the farmer sowing seeds. Jesus will go on to explain this parable here. But still today, many people hear God's word but don't understand it because they're not ready to receive what God wants to say to them. In verse 11, we continue. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. There are many people in today's word that hear God's word but it never sinks in. Satan has control of their lives and doesn't allow them to hear what God has to say. Those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. There are people today that hear of God's love and his saving grace and how he died on the cross for us, for our sins. And while that sounds exciting and they want that or say they want that, they never take time to develop a relationship, to get grounded, to develop those roots by spending time with, Jesus, with Christ and fellowshipping with believers and learning to know more of Christ. Verse 14, the seed that fell among the thorns for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. There are people today that attend church, go to church, hear of God's word, and have grown up and spent some time in it, but they allow life to consume them. They allow the worries in life. They allow themselves to get distracted by material things like jobs, 
the money it produces and houses and cars and all the things that we can have in life and fun and pleasures, that their focus isn't on Christ and what he can do for us or what he has done for us and what we can do for him and living for him. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word and retain it and by persevering produce a crop. Let's read that again. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. Now, what crop do I produce? I understand if I plant corn, I produce, or that seed produces corn. So, by hearing God's word and taking it into my heart, what crop am I producing? In Matthew 5, 16, it says, In the same way, let your light shine before man, before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. God wants us to produce fruit by our good deeds. Let's turn to James chapter 2, starting in verse 14. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save him? So just claiming to have faith but not living for Christ... Can that save us? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? Does saying to someone, I hope you stay warm, does that keep them warm? Does that fill their bellies by saying, oh, I hope you, you, um, get food that doesn't help the person but we can give food to someone or we can help give clothes to someone just our words don't do anything when it comes to providing for people in the same way faith by itself if not accompanied by action is dead but someone will say you have faith i have deeds Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Just saying the words that you believe in Jesus Christ, that you believe in God, doesn't mean anything if it's purely words. In James 1.22, it says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. So it's not just hearing God's word. It's putting it into action. So today's activity is a little bit different. We want to put into action some good deeds. My challenge to you is to go out and help someone. It may be your parents, it may be a neighbor. One of the suggestions that I have is take our lesson that we talked about, the farmer sowing and how thorns came up and weeds grew up. So can you go and help weed someone's flower bed or weed through the sidewalk or around a house ask your parents if they have something that you can do or go out in the yard pick up sticks and gather them up um, it's nice to not have all the little branches and all the little sticks when you mow you can do this at your own house or possibly at a neighbor's if you don't have flower beds and stuff Maybe you can help by picking up in the living room or helping with some dishes or helping around the house. Ask your parents of something that you could do or ask a neighbor if there's something that you might do to show some good deeds. 
Now, my other activity is if you go out and you pick up sticks or you pull flowers and stuff, you can take those negative things that you pulled and create something with it. For me, I went out and picked up some sticks and pulled some flowers. It's falling down here. And I just made a little picture. I have a tree here that I made with a stick and some weeds. And then I made a little house or a little um, tent for somebody to live in. I'm sure you guys can use your creativity and make something. Maybe it was laundry that you needed to fold. Well, maybe you can um, use the laundry basket at the end and make something creative out of it. Um, not destroy it, something temporary. But have some fun making something creative out of something that you did or picked up. Turn some negative into some positive. I'd love to see some pictures of what you have, what you did. If you want to send me pictures, send to orcmakids at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. And do as it says in James 1.12 again. Do not merely listen to the words and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Go out and share your love. Share God's love with those around you through our actions this week. Thank you.